Hey, what's up guys? Mike here, back in the aquarium lab. Not for long though, we're about to head outside. I unfortunately didn't get enough time to finish the 90 gallon tank. I haven't even started it actually. A bunch of stuff came up. Um, I gotta take my girlfriend to the airport today. It's Petco's dollar per gallon sale starting today, so I obviously have a lot of stuff to do and unfortunately I didn't get around to starting the setup of this tank yesterday. I apologize for that. Hopefully I can start on it later today, but that means you're not gonna get that video until Tuesday, but probably not until Thursday. So sorry again, wanted to still make a video for you guys. So we're gonna head outside and we're gonna check out the plant ponds because it's getting ready to be that time. So you guys will probably remember that this winter, the plant ponds totally froze over and more so this year than any other year that I've had these things up. Right here's the dwarf sage pond, and I'll try and get around the glare here, but you can see it's totally loaded with dwarf sage. This was about, oh, I don't know, like two or three months worth of growth. Just a few sprinkled in there. The entire pond was filled by the end of the summer. Because these ponds froze over so much this year, I was really worried about them being able to come back. That's something that happened to all three of the ponds. We'll get to the other two here in a second, but all three of the ponds came back after a harsh winter. And you know, this year, like I said, things were a little bit more intense. Uh, this thing was totally frozen over a few different times. And as a result, a lot of the plants ended up melting, but I think it's gonna be good to go for this year. So there's a lot of dead material up here at the top, but if we pull back the entire mat here, we can see that there's a lot of roots still down in here that are looking really good. So I have a feeling that this pond is gonna come back really strong. Now, because it's all filled with dwarf sag, you know, there's not a lot of room for more growth, but we're gonna take chunks out of this and use those chunks to inoculate new ponds and hopefully get just a ton of dwarf sag. This is a super hardy plant. I've mentioned it many times before. Great option for the beginner. And you know, obviously it can take some adverse conditions. So now let's head over here. I need to do some yard work today also. Look at this guys, it's a mess. Let's check out the two Luguigia ponds. So here, this first one, this was the super red Luguigia. I'm gonna have to go through some of my images on my phone and see if I can find some pictures of these ponds when they were at their best. If I can find them, I'll overlay them now. But this again, the super red Luguigia pond, you know, I gotta do a lot of work. I gotta trim back all this dead material. And uh, yeah, I, th I think they're gonna come back really strong though. There's a bunch of oak leaves covering both of these ponds. I need to go in and, you know, do the work here, cut all this dead stuff out and get these oak leaves out of here. But you can see there's even, there's some giant sag in this pond and you can see it's already starting to come up. So I bet if I go through and I clean out this top, portion here and get some of the dead material out. We're gonna have a ton of Luguigia starting to pop up here in the next month or two. I'm also pretty confident that these ponds are gonna come back too as well because if we pull this back, this one's a little bit heavier. We can see there, there are some still, some really good roots down there. And so all I need to do is pull back all the debris that's up on top and those plants should start popping out soon. When it comes to growing aquarium plants outside, you can't grow everything. I tried a bunch of different species my first summer and I tried a few extras the next summer, um, but a lot of them didn't work out. The Luguigia seems to do really nice. I mean, the stuff's a weed. The, uh, the pond over here was Luguigia palustris, if I didn't mention that earlier. Um, but they all grew really well. We don't have a lot of humidity here where I live, and I think that's gonna be a key for a lot of plants, is that you know they're from subtropical regions, they need a lot of humidity. The Luguigia, these two species at least, definitely don't need that to do well. So the plan is to just keep experimenting with new plants. There's a few others that I wanna try this summer and hopefully I can get away with, you know, getting some good plant growth. I really wanna try some more Luguigia. I wanna try Luguigia Cuba for one. And if I can get that plant to grow, I'll be, I'll be in business. So yeah, I mean, plant ponds, I think they're definitely worth a try. You know, you don't need to go as big as the kiddie pool. You can just go with, you know, a Tupperware tub, something that's shallow, try it out. 
um, I think it's definitely worth it. So here we have all the rocks that are gonna go into the 90, just been washing them over a couple times. And I got some new rocks from my local fish store to add to it. There's a bunch of rocks there, but I think I'm gonna, I think it's gonna require that many rocks, at least with you know the image in my head of what I want the tank to look like. So making headway, these are all gonna come inside today and Hopefully I can start working on the scape later today as well before I have to go to the airport. So I know in the last video I mentioned that I decided to pick the white pool filter sand to go in the 90 gallon tank against sort of, you know, the overwhelming recommendation by you guys to use the brown stuff, but fear not, I've changed my mind and I'm gonna go with the darker stuff and this is actually the darker pool filter sand. Um, you know, it looks, I think, a little bit brighter than it actually is on camera, but this stuff is actually pretty light. Once you get some, you know, light shining down on it, it's, it's fairly bright and it almost looks white here on the camera. So I am gonna go with the brown stuff. Um, like I said, it, it looks more brown than what you're seeing here. Um, I think it's gonna look really, really good. You know, it shouldn't show detritus and other, you know, waste as much as the white pool filter sand, that pure white sand. So I am gonna go with the brown stuff, even though it doesn't look, you know, it's not super dark. I think it's gonna look really good. The lights just turned on here in the 125. The rainbows are looking really, really good. And, you know, I don't know, I'm thinking about the 125. I'm thinking about the changes that I wanna make to it. And let me, let me get your opinion on this. Let me know in the comments below. This whole side was supposed to, the goal at least from the start, was to sort of mimic this side. And what I didn't do very well was create much height here. And so I think what I'm gonna do is get in here and redo this right side. The other thing that I wanna do, and I think is the reason why I'm not super happy with this tank, is just the substrate is a mess. I mean, yeah, I just poured in some sand here to you know see what it looked like. But you know, I got a mix of gravel here, various colors, and then, you know, there's a lot more sand right there. And I just think, you know, when you step back and look at the tank, it, I think that's what really bugs me about this. So I might, when I go in and redo this right side, I might just take out a bunch of the gravel. Cause again, there's soil in this tank, but there's, you know, an overwhelming amount of gravel on top of it because I've added so much to it, which isn't ideal. So I think what I'm gonna do is go in, carve out a bunch of that, you know, just that pure gravel and replace it with something else. And I might even just go with this sand because I don't know, I'm kind of liking it. And then of course I'll come over here and I'll build up, you know, some more height over here to try and get everything, you know, looking like it is over here. I'm really happy with this side. Um, in general, and I think it would be really cool to to mimic that over here. I think it would give overall the tank a lot better look to it. Check out this rainbow though. This dude always looks crazy different in the morning. His colors are dramatically different than sort of what his normal coloration is during the day. So he's always really fun to watch when the lights turn on. Another thing I want to mention about this tank has to do with a particular plant in it, the Hygro Pinnatophyta. This is a plant that, I mean, it's super popular. It's, uh, you know, thought of as a high-tech plant. This tank has CO2, but the lighting is really low. It's not doing super well, so I don't want to say, you know, it, it's not a high-tech plant. I still truly believe that it needs more light than it's getting here. But one thing about Pinnatophyta that I think a lot of people might not know about is that it has an interesting growth morphology when it grows well. So this plant is growing, you know, okay. Uh, but what it does is it sends off horizontal shoots, okay, that create new vertical growths and they attach to rocks and driftwood. So if you look at like a bunch of really popular Amano scapes, you'll notice that Pinnatophyta appears to be just, you know, on rocks and driftwood. And that's because it totally is. When this plant grows really well, it sends out those horizontal shoots to create new vertical growth, but it attaches itself to things like rocks and driftwood. And so that's what's happening right here. Teddy, get out of the way. Dude, come on, man. I'm trying to film this. So you can see here there's a patch of it that comes off one of these main stems and it has some new growths there that are trying to come up. But again, I think my lighting is too low and that's why it's not doing super well. So when we do the changes, I want this pin to fight it to grow better. I might move it around the tank a little bit. I'm gonna be bumping up my light. Again, I'm only using one bulb in my four bulb fixture. And that seemed to do really well for the other plants in this tank. But again, I wanna focus on this plant and getting it growing even better. 
Something also I haven't ever really talked about is the fact that my cherry barbs in this tank have spawned like three or four times. I originally had, I think, three in this tank to start with. There was two females and one male, I, I think, or maybe it was the other way around. Um, but you can see here, you know, we got a little baby right there. And there's a couple here in the back. Those are some older ones, actually. If you spend enough time in front of this tank, you can find them. They're pretty skittish. They stay out of the way, uh, which is a good thing. But that's something that, you know, I, I've really enjoyed watching, you know, the different spawns take place and, you know, you see new babies pop up here and there. And I think total now here, I have like 25 of them. So that's, that's pretty good. I mean, they've, they've been spawning for, you know, I've, I've had batches of babies come out, you know, for the last six months or so. And, uh, and that's always good. Baby fish are always a plus. I didn't have to do anything specific to get them to spawn. Uh, you know, they just did it naturally. There's a lot of hiding places back here. And the survival rate of the young has been, has been pretty good, I think. Um, it's hard to tell because, you know, you don't see their eggs or anything because there's so much plant material in this tank. But that's something that's pretty cool that's been going on. Sorry again for the short video, guys. Like I said, I wanted to just get something out to you, give you something to watch today. I know there's a bunch of other videos people are putting out that are probably more interesting than this one, but uh, I hope that it sort of satisfies you, gives you a little bit of an update uh, with what's going on. Like I said, the 90 gallon tank should be up, hopefully, at, at least by Thursday. Um, if not sooner, that, that first aquascaping video. So thanks so much for hanging in there. Thanks so much for watching, guys. I appreciate you so much. If you're new, consider subscribing. Leave this video a like. If you're into plant ponds like I am, I'm super excited. And uh, as always, guys, we'll see you next time.